Hello everyone. Welcome to this tutorial on Snowflake. In today's tutorial, we are going to have overview about the Snowflake user interface. So what is this user interface and what is the purpose of this? So this is the user interface normally administrative as well as the data analytics people uses for analyzing the data as well as for administration purpose. This page is used to create the snowflake objects. So what are the snowflake objects? The snowflake objects are nothing but the databases, schema, warehouse and tables. So we can create and manage all these snowflake objects using this interface. Not only that, we can also limit the amount of data getting loaded into the tables by using this tool or by using this user interface. Apart from it, we can execute DML and DDL operations on ad hoc basis. If you are the administrative user or if you have the administrator role, then you can create and manage the users. Also, you can apply or implement these security features. So let's understand what are the sections or what are the functionalities available in this tool. As we can see on the top, we have the databases, then we have shares, data marketplace, warehouse, worksheet and history. On the right hand side, we can see the help and partner connect. We also have the newer version of Snowflake user interface and the preview is available. You can just click here and it will take over to the new user inf interface. And then we have the user which we have used for login to this application. And at the bottom, we can see what role it belongs to. If you use this drop down, you will see the what are the roles this user can play. Now let's understand each of these sections one by one. Let's start with the databases. If you are using the trial version, by default, these are the databases you will be able to see. The first is we can see the Snowflake sample data, a demo DB and util DB. If you want to drop any one of this schema, you can select and click on the drop. If you want to clone it, means completely create a duplicate database, then you can click on clone and you can create it. We are going to see all these functionalities in in detail in our upcoming sessions but these are just brief about these sections what you can do with a databases section using this section you can create a database you can clone it you can drop it and even you can transfer the ownership of this database let's try to create a sample database for that we have to click on the create give the name to the database i'll mention it's a test database provide the comment this this is sample database in case you would like to execute a command using the snow sql then you need to write a sql command to create the database and that you can see by using this show sql so sql will show the actual command which is getting executed behind the scene so this is the command create database test and then we are providing the comment We'll close that and let's click finish button. So this will create a test database for us and currently the owner is sysadmin which is the current user. So this way we can see using the database section we can create and manage the databases. Whenever you select any database on right hand side you can see what what permission you would like to grant to this database for example if, if i select a demo database here we can grant the privileges for the database read write etc i'll just cancel this pop-up message now let's go ahead and see the next section that is nothing but the warehouse page 
In the warehouse section, we already see one of the warehouse already provided with this trial version and that's the compute warehouse. Right now, the status is suspended. We can see it's the size is small and it has a cluster which is one maximum and one minimum. Then we have the scaling property is a standard whether it's running, whether queue and other properties. So in case you would like to create another warehouse, then click on the create and we can provide the name of warehouse. I'll just mention test. Then you can select the size of your warehouse. It totally depends on how much computational power you need in order to work on that warehouse. Suppose you have the complex operation and you would like to deal with millions of records. In that case, you might like would like to select the larger or bigger size. So currently there are several sizes are coming, extra small. So it is one credit per hour. Then we have small, medium, large, extra large and so on. But if you see the credit, that means that much amount of money you need to pay for your usage. So we have to select appropriately. I'll keep the default one. Then you can select the maximum clusters minimum cluster, then the scaling policy as a standard, auto suspend or by default it is having the 10 minutes. Because if you keep that non-suspended state, then you will be charged more. As this is a trial version, it will not applicable, but in real time we have to apply proper properties so that it will be cost effective for your business. Then you can provide the comment. In case you would like to see the SQL, you can click on the show SQL and it will give the behind the scene executing SQL and then click finish. And this way it will create the warehouse. Of course, as like the database, you can provide the permission also. Then in case you want to change the configuration, suppose you created a extra large so we can see the extra large is created and you would like to make it large then select it and click select this and click on the configuration and change the configuration accordingly i'll just make it large and finish it so this will change immediately in case you would like to change the status of your warehouse select it select the warehouse and click suspend and this will give us a, a pop-up message saying that are you sure you want to suspend that warehouse i will click yes and the status will change to suspended in case you would like to drop one of this warehouse just select it warehouse and click drop in case you would like to resume that means if you want to go in started position you can use the resume option and in case you want to transfer the ownership you can do that as well so I'll keep this as is in suspended format and we'll go ahead for the next page and that is nothing but the worksheet. Worksheets are nothing but the it's kind of uh, if you have already worked on a database client application such as SQL developer or Toad etc. Then it is this worksheet is nothing but the actual SQL client where you can write queries and execute it. For example, in case you would like to run select query, you can write query here like this and this run button will enable and then you can execute it. We are going to see how to execute and uh, how to see the data, how to get the stats, all those in our upcoming session, but this is kind of introductory. So we are just giving the overview of what you can do with this section. So this work worksheet section is used to write the query and execute the query. The good thing about this worksheet is once you write and when you close it and reopen it, this tab will not close. This, this tab will be still appear. So you don't have to worry about this saving this queries and all that. Of course, you can save these queries or save these worksheets, but um, it is not necessary. This Snowflake tools keeps those queries in the memory. So whenever you open it again, when you log in back, it will still show those queries. You can create multiple worksheets also by clicking this plus sign and um, you can add what are the database, what is the warehouse and etc. 
at the drop down here you can see you can open particular worksheet you can see the some tutorials available related to that if you have the already written scripts you can load those SQL scripts as well uh, one of the feature of this worksheet is you can minimize this database explorer view by just clicking this arrows on right hand side we can see the which user with what role then what is the warehouse name what is the database name and what is the schema name so all those details are displayed on the right hand side you can change any one of this property as per your need then uh, there are three dots which tells us whether in case you want to load the script using this option you can turn on the code highlights or you can hide the run kind of confirmation etc and at the bottom when you execute query you will see the results also you will have the data preview so this is about the worksheet page now the next section is history sections so what is the purpose of history so when we execute any query when you create when you change database or warehouse all those queries get logged in the history section for example when we change the property of our test warehouse from uh, running to suspended state it internally executes the SQL statement if you click on this you'll see this is the exec SQL statement got executed so it keep tracks of all executable statement even if you run any select query that will be also logged here here corresponding to each of this SQL there is a query ID is present by using query ID you can filter and you can investigate what happened over the period period of time it also tells how long that query got executed like for example this particular query executed in 51 millisecond so this just gives the uh, the history of your execution you can filter this section by using user status warehouse session id and so on you can select that attribute for example warehouse and from drop down you can select the particular warehouse you would like to monitor so it will automatically populate you can clear the filters on the right hand side it will show all the data so this way uh, you can use the history section for checking the what happened over the period of time then we have the help section help section uh, gets populated based on which section you are selecting for example if you select database and you would like to get more information about database then go to this help make sure you have selected the database and if you click on the either you can visit the community page or you can click on the show help panel so this will show the details about the database now suppose let me select the worksheet and go to the help and click on the show help panel it will show the details about the worksheet and so on so this is very helpful if you are using the very first time then we have the uh, partner connect so if you are connecting the snowflake with th any third party application such as fitran or clicksense or informatica or data robot robot etc so you have those connectors already available so you can select one of that and create the configuration in our upcoming lecture we are going to see how to integrate or how to connect this the different uh, kind of application with a snowflake in detail let's go ahead and see um, more about the shares in case you would like to share the snowflake data so this is our option will be used uh, to sh securely share the uh, data then we have the data marketplace um, this is used to get the more insights about the business you can uh, explore the more option in the marketplace uh, just click on this link it will take you to new page but this is as a developer or a, as a user will not going to use these options quite often on the right hand we can see the user id with which we are logged in then we have the role this is sysadmin current role you can change the password you can switch the role you can money uh, manage your preferences such as email id and all that you can see there in that uh, preview section of the preferences and then finally you can log out so this is the overview about the snowflake user interface in our upcoming lecture we are going to see what is the architecture of snowflake 
and then followed by the uh, the demo about loading the data in the snowflake system so thank you for watching this video if you have any questions or queries you can definitely mention in the comment section of this video please do not forget to subscribe my channel for more interesting update about the snowflake thank you and have a nice time